I love stories about old Hollywood. And 50s Hollywood is incredible to, to shoot and to recreate. This script had two stories, those who watched and those who were being watched. You and I are going to practice the fine art of being noticed without looking like you're trying. We always wanted the film to have an authentic feel as possible. We wanted realistic. I mean, we wanted it to be stylized, but not overly stylized. When I came along and got involved, I had a, a book, a kind of Bible created, that was given to all the heads of the departments that included period photographs that showed what the early Hollywood era was like and what Louis Seymour's era was like. You looked at the photos, and they've always got a drink in their hand. And they've always got some woman on their arm. Oh, must have been an amazing time. Hi, George. They had great nightclubs in those days. They had Ciro's and Mocambo on the Sunset Strip. And then they had the Coconut Grove and the Ambassador Hotel. All the stars went nightclubbing in those days. Hollywood was so incredibly glamorous, and we see a lot of that through the film. We recreated a version of the Coconut Grove with its tropical flavor, and we also recreated Ciro's and the elegance of Ciro's. We were a part of the time in Toronto, and even if we had been in Los Angeles, we would not have been able to use Ciro's because it's the comedy store now. Looking at the research on Ciro's alone was fabulous. Everybody was mingling from table to table. Everybody knew each other. We would have photographs laid out of what the coconut grove looked like, or uh, the little lamps on the tables for Ciro's were actually you know, recreations of, of what was there. When we do the Santa Monica Beach Club, we tried to create this sense of that glamorous world. We had seen pictures of beach clubs, and we found this incredible thing called Sunnyside Pavilion, and we were able to give the feeling of a club on the beach in Santa Monica. So I would say that we were as truthful as we could be to the essence of these places. And I think we were pretty successful. Well, you don't seem sad. What if I were? I won't allow it. One day a photograph came to my desk, a picture of the house taken the morning after his death. And I looked, and there was a for sale sign in the front yard. So there's a subtle moment when he's talking about having to take the wrestling gig. We have a guy outside the window there pull his car up and take a sign out and nail it in the ground and leave. It's all in the background of that scene. So we never stopped researching. You try and keep it in the spirit of the times and the spirit of the reality that was, you know, that world. You see things and it just it, it inspires you to, you know, use that to create something even more interesting. Photographically, we tried to emphasize we. Uh, the, the camera is more stable. Uh, we never did handheld with those sequences. But the idea was to make that look as glamorous as we could. It just sort of sparkles. Why is it so drab? Superman was blue and red. Not on TV, not enough contrast. We had to find the right balance between depicting what happened accurately and authentically. Hopefully I've created a guy that looks en different enough from me and c look closer towards what Reeves looks like without uh, uh, people sort of going like, oh, hey, he put a third eye in his forehead. I kept looking at Ben and my God, this is amazing. He's actually changed. He's changed. And I, was, and I couldn't figure out how he was doing it. And then I realized he was wearing a false nose. <laughs> I mean, ah, Ben, you're it? He said, yes. Yes, I am. Doing a film based on real people uh, really is a challenge. And part of it was to try to capture, of course, the physicality. As it happens, Diane looks a lot like Tony Mannix. Or at least they could be cousins. I'm Tony. Just a poor girl with no last name. <laughs> we looked at some photographs of Tony, and we tried to alter the makeup slightly to alter her face a little bit. And the wig was magnificent on her. I tell you, I've really had a great time playing older than myself because it's liberating. Any costume designer wants, at some point, those costumes to become clothing. You have to get past the drag and into the story and into the character.
one of the scenes, you meet lenore lemon, and she's in this canary yellow dress in george's bedroom, and the simo character, and it's just like, it's shocking. but then there's a later scene when tony gives george a gun and she's in sort of so almost champagne colored silk blouse, and he's in sort of a lighter blue shirt. and julie wanted to show that they belong together. and it's just things like that which bring out the themes. there's this one great moment where adrian's character and mine meet, but we don't really meet the two worlds just just brush up against each other. There's a real contrast between the world of George and Tony and the world of Simo. Aside from, you know, the obvious glamorous world that we all kind of assume Hollywood was, there are all these kind of darker undercurrents. Don't give me grief, okay? Somebody said you had to stay in bed. Louis Simo's world is kind of overexposed and the camera's very active and it's a lot of handheld and the camera's very subjective. It always kind of rides on Simo's shoulder. We made it look really seedy. I put in the sound of junkyard dogs and a freight train and hung his big old boxer shorts there. Why? To say, this is real life. The late 50s, it's just like people started slouching and they were wearing their clothes looser. Yes? I didn't want to show the stars, you know, rubbing elbows all the time. I mean, it's interesting, briefly, at Ciro's, you know, to see those people. But what's also interesting is to see real life in Hollywood. It's not all the glamour. In fact, mostly it's not. We're not gilding the lily or anything. It's just trying to make it look as good as it should. Just servicing the movie properly. It was a different life, and I can understand why uh, you can come from Cleveland and you look off at the distance and it seems like there's this amazing world that you'd like to belong to.